Hello and welcome to episode 42 of Throttle Stop Garage. Alright, in episode 41 we got our butt kicked all over the place. We had the oil pan go wrong. We had uh, wrong angles cut on the, uh, the brace members for the K member. Uh, we had the motor mount with the missing hole. Uh, could there have been, uh, anyways, a, a travesty <laughs> again? I always film the intros before I actually know what's happened. So the plan is to get some of the detailing done on the frame. I, I'm actually super excited and a little bit nervous about parts of this. Um, there's elements here that are unresolved. I have no idea where uh, parts of it are going. But uh, let me explain just a few of the things that I hope to accomplish. So the things that I have left to go when I pull the frame out, first, I'm having a problem getting the frame in properly, right? I mean, gee, why not? Uh, but I'm a 16th of an inch away from being centered in the car. And that's because I, I have those outriggers and I've got those welded on and the outriggers shouldn't have been welded on. I did that because it was easy. Up on the bench, it's easy just to weld the outriggers on. Now I know why the outriggers go on when the frame is in the car, because that allows you to get the frame centered. At this point, one of the outriggers is about a sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to weld it in with the MIG. You, you've seen my MIG work. I can get the squirt gun to work pretty well. Um, but that doesn't make it as strong as I would like, is to have that big gap. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to sleeve it on the inside. So I'm going to have a mobile sleeve on the inside of that outrigger, so the outrigger part is going to have a sleeve and that sleeve will be able to go in and out and accommodate the little width jiggle that I need to get the frame in so that I'm not fighting it. Uh, I was out here the other night working late and uh, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get this frame centered in the car and I couldn't get it, I couldn't get it figured out so then I looked underneath and I'd written on the outrigger that it's a sixteenth of an inch too long but I did that months ago and I just plum forgot that I'd done it at all. Um, and that'll happen, right? So this is one of my bad habits is when I'm on stuff and then I'm off stuff again, then I forget um, the detail that was stumping me. That was the problem. I'd figured it out before. My solution to so that. And then it'll be things like, I'll get the, the other pieces welded in the, the bracing and stuff. That's fine. That's easy. But it's things like, where do the brake line tabs go? So I have to figure out where the brake line tabs go because they have to go on now for exhaust hangers. So these are all things that, I mean, I, I watch enough uh, guys building cars on YouTube and it, it kind of drives me nuts, you know, to watch them. They got, they got it all freshly painted, everything's all nice, and then they break out the drill and they start pumping holes. I marvel at it. I go, what are you doing? Uh, so I, I don't like that, so I, I don't do that. Anyway, so in this episode, I'm going to try to get all of those details uh, finished up. Um, and with that, enough babbling out of me, let's get on to the project and get some work done, for heaven's sake. All right, we're going to need some serious coffee to get through this episode, people. So uh, take a minute and uh, go and get yourself uh, a brew because we're going to be here for a while. It's all of 23 minutes, but it's all important. Anyway, uh, under we go. Got to mark that frame up instead of just taking a 16th of an inch out. In fact, you can see it right there written. Uh, 16th long, <laughs> that's the marking that I had there. Uh, so I just jumped underneath and marked the quarter inch off. Uh, I don't care. I've got these little sleeves to put in, so not a problem. Anyways, out come the motor mounts. Uh, down will come the frame just a little bit. And uh, I, I left this in there. It's like battle with the light. Uh, anyone who's ever done this kind of stuff, uh, you got to wear the face shield. And you got to have your full protection on in order to do the plasma at this kind of close quarters. But then you can't see anything. So I, I kept whacking this light. I just thought it was amusing. So I thought I'd leave it in for your viewing pleasure. Uh, the struggle's real, people. The struggle's real. Anyway, there it is. I, th I think this is going to work. But no. Bash. <laughs> Anyway, it didn't. Every time I turned around, this thing was driving me nuts because I'm like, "Where am I putting the torch? I don't want to cut the whole thing off, you know, lop an inch off. Then I'll feel like a fool." <laughs> There's enough of this episode that makes me look like a fool, so there we go. Anyway, off it comes. A few seconds with the plasma, and that's uh, no more drama for that. Yeah, get out of there, quarter inch. And there, that's all it's needed to make that move back into place. <laughs> A little tap with the mouth. 
All right, so making the sleeves. Uh, here comes the sleeves. I still haven't changed that saw blade, hey? Like, <laughs> last year. Oh, I'm going to get right on that. Uh, a few seconds with the bandsaw and uh, a couple of love taps and get the sleeves made rather nicely. Touch things up with the grinder just to make sure they're nice and flat. Oh, and then I put a little relief so that there wouldn't be any uh, problem with the bend uh, cracking the metal out there. Yeah. Anyways, I started doing it nice and I ended up with a bulky hammer. There, finished. Out, I would like to get some brake tabs and the clutch tabs uh, at least tacked on or marked out so I know where they are. These ones are from All Star Performance. Uh, part number you can see it there 60030 that's a mounting tab for brake lines so I thought well that ought to solve my problem right out of the box you know they're what you don't want to see that's the brake tab so that's what's going to hold the brake line in place or the clutch line or these tabs and they don't fit on here very well so so that the or use the clip so it mounts this way Right, so going in towards the frame. Or of course you can clip it this way. You try to save time, you try to save money, and you end up uh, right back where you started. So <laughs> I'm gonna make my own. Uh, why not? You know, what else did I have to do today? I try to get something done, it'll end up taking, you know, what should be a two-second job. Weld on the tab turns into fabricate the tab so that it fits the bloody clip. You know, you get this junky stuff is... Ah. Alright, so I get the 16 gauge out because that matched what the other brake tabs were. And I get the width right. I mean, it didn't matter which way I put that clip on. It was always, the clip was falling off the edge of the tab. So that's no good. So I got my radiuses put in. Uh, yeah, check it. That's fine. Get the holes pumped in it. That's all great. Uh, and then other fun things happen. Okay, so the net result of actually filming this piece was I decided those brackets weren't good enough, so I did them again. <laughs> uh, let's just quickly review. It'll take two seconds. All right, so if that piece fits through here, this is the adapter bracket. The clip would go on. Get it the right way around and it would be sloppy okay there would be uh there's probably about a sixteenth of an inch of gap there which isn't going to be close enough and that would mean this can flop around uh no, it probably won't probably really no big deal but why do it wrong okay so i made that out of um, the brackets the new brackets out of three three millimeter steel so one eighth and then i ground the face uh, down to two and a half mil on the belt sander just because three mil was a little tight uh, two and a half uh, is right on so I'm not gonna push it on because if you push it on it's going to uh, stay there <laughs> so because uh, that's what it's designed to do but you can see there that that clamp is now nice and tight should be able to knock that on the bracket sits this way on the frame uh, so that's all going to be real nice. These are the pieces that are taking the time. Uh, I've already made that bracket twice, so I have lots of those. I should put them up for sale. Uh, and now that's the third time. So almost every job lately uh, has been requiring me to hit it at least three times before I get it right. So it's a bit frustrating, but um, that's the way it goes. Anyways, she's all fine now. Um, Let's keep moving on with this. As always, I didn't feel like cleaning my bench. Look at the mess on this bench. So uh, I asked my bench if it would do it all by itself. Uh, anyways, this is another little shout out to George at Soup Classic Motoring. Uh, get in there and watch the guy's YouTube channel. It's, it's so much better than my, uh, my stop motion stuff. But uh, I had a little bit of fun putting this together. It was only about a thousand frames, by the way, one at a time. <laughs> and there goes the hammers. Back in the toolbox, silly hammers. Don't you know we're about to do welding? And away they go.
files and things. It's amazing what gets collected on a bench over a winter. <laughs> so all this random bits and pieces of stuff. Now I gotta find where it all ended up actually. <laughs> I'll want all this back eventually. There the magnets go, they make their their way off. Gloves. Yes, the gloves. Time for a new pair actually. I've sewn those ones back up a couple of times. Bye to the shrinker and the stretcher. Alright, time for a quick wipe down. And then on with the frame jig. So I was nicely making progress when all of a sudden my compressor made some funny noises and then a bang started uh, filling my garage with an oily smoke. And then I tried to move the engines out of the way. That one falls over. That's my B23E. Just falls over. Thanks. Thanks, engine. Anyway, clear all that junk out of the way. Finally can get access to this stupid compressor. It's a Quincy. It was supposed to last 50,000 hours, but, you know, maybe I didn't have it <laughs> positioned quite as well as I should have. Uh, it always leaked a little bit of air out the top, almost from new, so I replaced the valve there and uh, wound all that stuff in. Then, of course, the new pump, because it's not worth repairing the old pump, um, needs new mount holes. Of course, everything needs new mount holes. This took an entire weekend. I summed it up in about 15 seconds worth of video here, but you know, you drill a bunch of holes, you go back to the store about 30 times. Anyways, that's a big Roll Air Chinook K28 industrial pump. Uh, no messing around with that machine, I'll tell you. This thing is fantastic. And yeah, I did run it on a rubber hose, but only just for the weekend while I had to wait for the compressor place uh, in the industrial area to open up again to get the proper stainless line, which you can see here. All right, so that thing's working pretty well. Happy with it. Seems to fill the tank quick, so I'm happy. Anyways, stupid engine goes back. I should really sell that thing. It's beautiful, but you know, really, just gets in the way. All right, three engines back in a row, some tidying up done, and let's get back to work here. Holy cow. Again, before we get the frame pulled out, I have to get the clutch plumbing put in. Now, the original uh, 960 bell housing has no provision for a pivot uh, to put uh, standard sort of clutch forks, whether you wanted to operate it via cable or via a clutch slave cylinder. There's no pivot in here. Now I can put one in because the adapter plate's just uh, one inch solid aluminum. Could, you could add a pivot in it, but I didn't feel like it uh, because Tilton makes a fantastic hydraulic throwout bearing and it's meant for these uh, particular transmissions. So, or not for, well, for the transmission that I have, which is a Borg Warner T5 world class transmission. Uh, so that's the Tilton 6000 series hydraulic release bearing. You can see it's got two lines that go into it, uh, and those lines are pretty much, they're exactly the same actually, from what I know. Uh, so one of them has to serve as a feed line, and the other one has to serve as the bleed line. Okay, so the rule of thumb is, or at least the only way these things will work properly, is you feed them uh, on the bottom and you let the air out through the top. Okay, so that bleed screw then hooks onto one of those lines. You have to do it through, obviously, it's got to fit in through a clip. So there's a little bit of, I'll talk about that in a sec. This will be the bell housing that we're going forward with. It does have a slot at the top, that's for a crank position sensor. Uh, the one at the bottom is probably, I don't know, to look at the bolts as they come by to do up your um, torque converter or something like that, but you know, it's just a big gap down here. Uh, but because the flywheel is going to run right around where my finger is, uh, there's no way to have these lines go out here and not have them hit the flywheel. And then the fl these lines won't get over to the frame. So I'm wondering, you're, you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with the frame? Well, if all things work out well, the length of that flex line here on the bottom side will go right over to the frame member where I can have uh, the hard line connecting up, and it will fit. At least the measurements I've made so far indicate that that's going to happen. Now, the only thing you need to attach this um, hydro bearing is they give you a shoulder bolt that bolts into the end of one of the bolts that goes into 
holding that bearing retainer. It's a really clever little system. So you need to estimate where, I mean, ideally you do this with the engine pulled, but I don't want to pull the engine right now. I'm just too lazy to do it. Now, this might come back to haunt me, but they are flex lines, so I should be okay. But um, anyway, so I've taken a measurement of where the angle of this bearing retainer goes in relation to the, um, the bell housing. And then what I'm going to do is drill two holes uh, right through the sides and run these two lines out. So the bottom line is going to come out. You, you try to take them out as close as you can uh, to the end to make sure there's lots of clearance for clutches and other things that I currently don't have installed in the car. Uh, as long as it's no higher, and this bearing is currently in a low position, as long as it's no higher than the release bearing, we're going to be in good shape. Uh, in terms of having it exit, because the clutch pressure plate's not going to be anywhere higher. That's It runs an eighth of an inch off of uh, that top uh, ground bearing surface there. Uh, and all of that will have to get fit up when the engine's built and the transmission's built and everything else is assembled. Here on the side. Okay, so here I had three stabs at it to get it right. Again, this is why... Sorry folks, I was doing pretty good there for a while at getting a video out a week, but with compressors dying and everything else going wrong, uh, you get the idea. So that fits in here perfectly. That fork goes in and it's a, I don't want these things rattling around. That's not the idea. Uh, all right, so then that goes in. Then these get drilled. Um, sometimes I'm going to use that grommet and sometimes I'm not. So that grommet's big enough to clear the head and sort of only just. And then the, um, the rubber hose goes in through the grommet and the rubber hose will go around the stainless line. These stainless lines are fantastic. They're, they're Teflon on the inside. They're good for, you know, ever for life. Uh, they're fantastic things. But uh, the stainless steel will cheese grater anything you put it against. If you just let that run through a hole in the transmission, any vibrations as you're driving or whatever, the stainless will completely shred that, um, that bell housing. So, you know, you zip tie a piece of hose to it uh, as you're installing it on either side. You push it through a grommet and you should then be protected. I've had no problems doing that in the past. One of the details that I've just been figuring out while I've been trying to uh, decide when to pull the frame has been uh, how to affix the plumbing. So here are the original clamps, clamps but uh, as you know there's no chance I'm going to be reusing them so I don't actually like the way these work particularly. You can see this one here's uh, been bent up so there's no way that that would have effectively held a brake line. You know it's uh, you know, wobbly and that's usually the way those things turn out. It's really no big deal. They're just bolting the part the brake line in that case directly onto the body. You can always go with these. These are a vinyl coated uh, steel clamp so it does hold the line off the body and once you've clamshelled it shut it is a pretty effective clamp. Uh, it just looks kind of ugly so never been a huge fan. I, I have a few. Uh, then there's these ones. They work pretty pretty nicely. I might use those from time to time. They're stainless steel, they're wrapped in rubber. Uh, so that's a little bit better. Uh, for some installations, that's gonna work just fine. So I have a pile of those. Uh, then you get the hot rod stuff. So here are some, you know, quote unquote billet. Don't, don't think that these are individually machined because they're not, they're just extrusions, right? So just extrusions that have been uh, you put a screw through them and they cut them off and they're sort of anodized. Uh, I'll use those where I need single line, single line holding. Uh, so for areas 
like across the front of the cross member where I need the single line for the brake lines, that's for a 3 16 line, that's for a 3 8 line. So I need a single clamp for the fuel line, that's great. Um, and I found them in duels uh, from time to time, but the price of them is just, I mean, it makes your eyes water. I mean, they're not expensive when they're these little extrusions, but you go asking for twos or threes or custom made uh, arrangements where you want two fuel lines and one brake line or or an evap line which is quarter inch not three eighths you just you just don't you just simply don't find those or if I have found them I look at them and I think well I'm not paying 20 American dollars uh, for that because that's that's a lot of money in Canadian pesos so we just can't go there so those those are gonna go back in the container anyway so I've decided to make my own uh, why wouldn't you so I, uh, I first designed this clamp. This is kind of, I've got a 3D printer, so I just 3D printed them. Um, they only printed out of ABS, so they're, they're plenty strong. But that was just gonna hold uh, a fuel return and feed line plus a brake line. Uh, and it's, you know, it's reasonably huge. So this is what happens when you first start in is, you know, so a lot thinner. In, in size, uh, way more reasonable in terms of uh, what it's actually got to do. And as soon as I got the base one done, making all the different ones uh, became reasonably straightforward. So every different possible line arrangement has been tried. So I've got four lines with this one. I'm just gonna zoom out so we can see them all. Two three eighths lines plus a quarter inch line. Two three eighths lines plus brake line, a three sixteenths line. Just a twin, a twin ten mil, and then I've epoxy filled the leaf. That was always the intent. Uh, so Volvo originally had that as a lovely little green leaf. Uh, so I'm going to do the same. And on the rear of the car. I had some trouble getting it to kind of clip and hold together, so that one didn't really work. Same idea, and I tried some different ideas with that, that didn't work. Uh, third time was a charm, right? So this particular clamp, um, it comes apart, there's a key there, and then it fits together quite nicely, and then clip and away you go. Uh, and that particular clamp holds uh, two 10 mil lines, one 7 mil line, and a 5 mil line, and that fits perfectly uh, up against, again, the floor pan with that piece going right by the trans tunnel. It gets quite tight in there, and I want those lines to look nice and neat. Okay, so that's the full set. So that's the line story. So now I have mostly figured out where the lines go. All right, so there you can see that line bracket just fitting under the car. There's the one that sits up against the floor pan in the back. And then here's the lines connected onto the bell housing and how they all work and go through. That's the final attachment point. Sure, he's never shot that. All right, that's a wrap for this episode. Thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. Um, boy, I hope, sure hope the next episode goes better. <laughs>